So, let's have a look at our next little exercise using Affinity Designer on the iPad and this one I've called Reflections on a Glassy Surface. You'll see it elsewhere of course on the internet but I like to do it this way on slides so you can pause and follow along really easily. So let's see where we start. Set up a suitable artboard. Set up two swatch panels as shown. Now you can see my artboard this time I've called it Cinema Screen. It's 1920 by 1080. What I'm actually dealing with here is a suitable size for using in um, Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro or iMovie because a lot of most movies these days are 1920 by 1080 in the aspect ratio. And I'm, I have this in mind with the things I'm designing now. Now the two colour swatches you can see that's not quite a black there although it does look like it. It's mm, sort of a really deep deep blue and a lighter blue up the top. And you can see how I've got them set up there and it's slightly enlarged so you can see them easily. So select the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle to cover the artboard. And you can see the colours I've got there and that rectangle has been coloured to that blue colour that we just made. Now we select the gradient overlay tool and that's in the FX option menu. Now be careful when you select these in the layer FX you can switch the switch on but you have to actually tap the words gradient overlay to bring up the context menu that's down the bottom where it says blend mode, um, opacity type, gradient and there's a right arrow there which we'll come to later. So you've got the gradient tool. It colours everything black fading to white. We'll change that slightly shortly. Now set the gradient angle to 90 degrees in the context menu. See the left arrow pointing there? Well on the previous screen it was the right arrow and you click on that that will take you to this and the very end one is the angle. Set that to 90 degrees so the clear bit is at the top of your rectangle and the dark bit is at the bottom. Not left and right like it was a moment ago. Now using the HSL sliders in the next context menu screen adjust the luminance to lighten the gradient. I set it to, I say, 65%. You may need to adjust this slightly. Uh, don't be fooled by the luminance of your, your uh, device's screen either because that can alter how the thing really looks, just slightly, but be aware that your screen luminance is not quite the same as your design luminance. And you can see you've gone left there You've got normal 100% linear and the gradient. You tap in the gradient area and it brings up that little bar with the colour, the plus, the page, the bin and the undo circle thing there. Tap on the colour, brings up the HSL slider and you can drag the luminance slider to the left slightly or the right depending on where you've got it set. If you've been fiddling with it before designer leaves it where you had it before which can be a bit of a trap for unwary players. But you will see that it reduces the depth of the blackness that's on that um, gradient and that's what we want. Now lock the rectangle gradient layer. You can see up on the right hand side there I've got the lock on. You don't want to inadvertently change that now that you've got it set to where you want it. Next, select the trapezoid object. That's in your object shapes. Select the trapezoid. What we're going to do here is drag that out. Drag out a trapezoid shape that half fills the rectangle. Observe the measurements. It will half fill it by default and you can see this happen as you drag it out. And just keep dragging it till it's a full width on the bottom and it'll be the right width on the top. You can set the mark by the little lock marks on the artboard edge. Right around the edge of the artboard, because it's locked, you'll see little star signs. You can't see them here, but you will see them, like little crosses, little very faint crosses. 
telling you that that lower layer is locked. Now, if you've had the blue selected before, the object you drag, <coughs> excuse me, the object you drag out will be blue by default. If not, just set it to the blue color. You can see the measurement on the right hand side is 1920 wide on the bottom and its top measurement is 542 position 538 down. Now I know that's the center because um, snapping is on and the horizontal and vertical center point bars were on when that was being put in place. But if not, just make sure it's in the center. Easy. Again, now select the gradient tool in the FX tool set. And you can see as soon as you select it and you tap on the words gradient overlay with the switch on, you have the normal blend mode and it's a linear type gradient, but it's left to right again. What we do is set that to vertical as you did before. In other words, you change it to 90%. Go to the right, change the angle to 90% and that puts your gradient the right way around. With the gradient option selected, select the color and then the color picker tool and move it up to select the swatch color. Now you can see the color picker tool there, the little eyedropper. Just take it across to the swatch and select the swatch color. I've got it nearly off the screen there, but you can probably adjust that a little bit yourself. And um, as soon as you do that, use the color picker tool, your, your gradient will change to um, blue up to white, which is what you want. Set the gradient to 90 degrees again and adjust the color luminance so it's slightly lighter. I didn't take it to 65 this time, I've taken it to 70. Saturation 47, hue 189. Mm, you can probably leave those there, it's, it's not terribly important at the moment. Now, we select the artistic text tool. Center the word mirror. Use a nice clear font for this first try. I can't remember what font I used there, but it doesn't matter. Copy and paste the word and drag down below the original. So you can see I've got mirror, mirror, which is, hmm, okay, it's a copy, but it's not a mirror. Now we'll fix that. Select the Transform Studio and flip vertical. So it turns it upside down. Now flip and rotate over on the right hand side there, you can see the the um, vertical flip one, it's the rightmost of the two in flip and rotate. Adjust the baseline to separate the two text lines. So go into the, the letter A there, you can see the text character mode. Now move the baseline so that it's about five pixels below the word mirror. The upside down mirror is separated by about five pixels. That makes it nice and clear. Next, select the transparency tool. And again, you've got the type linear, but it's left to right, which is not quite right. So what we do is move the bar to vertical and adjust for the best transparency. So it's darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. I know the red lines around everything are a bit of a nuisance and they don't really make it all that clear, but ignore those if you can and observe that inside the letters the colours are changed from a dark to almost the same as the blue underneath, and that's just what you want. You can adjust that slightly so it is the best that you can um, the best that you can put for it. Change the opacity and blend to suit. Now I set the blend mode to a hard light. I've left the opacity the way it is because it's quite it's quite faint as it is. Um, it might be different on the desktop, but on the iPad I found that they behave slightly differently. These things. 
They work the same, but your tones and depth of colours vary slightly, and that's fine. Now we've got the word mirror upside down, and it looks fairly good. And now, the end result. And there's our end result. Mirror, mirror. And that's, if you think of a reflection in a glass panel, or or even not quite a mirror, because mirrors tend to give you a hard reflection. But a glass wall or a shiny floor, that's ideal for a shiny floor, that one. Think of a hospital corridor. Hmm, very topical these days. And there's your mirror reflection in the highly polished tiles. Very nice. And now you have a new design option to add to your kit. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Always greatly appreciate it.